All right. Well, new week, and uh, I'm sick of losing, so we've got to do whatever we can to break the streak. And um, good to be home, playing daytime, and uh, got to get rolling. So um, a lot of stuff to learn from on, on film, and, uh, you know, the goal is to be aggressive as we can and develop an identity um, as a team. And so uh, I've expressed my concern and my thoughts with the coaches, and appreciate the players giving all their effort and uh, working hard. And so I um, thought we we're probably a little bit too conservative in a lot of different areas, you know, after I review the film and everything. And that's not my style. So uh, we're going to be aggressive and try to find ways to develop an identity through aggression and through our toughness. And that's what we're focused on this week. And so any questions? Is that kind of the mentality at this point? I mean, having lost all these games and, you know, with just a few left, is it's, let's just go for it and be, you know, just take the risks now and just go? Yeah, and I think I, I just have to be really blunt about it, you know, as a head coach. I mean, this is all on me. So uh, the way I approach it and, and um, uh, demanding it, you know, it has to happen now and it's desperate. And basically, um, my mindset, if you're going to go down, you better start swinging, you know, and and uh, in, in the meantime, uh, develop a, an identity. I've been talking about that for a while, about uh, what are we going to hang our hat on. And um, uh, those of you that know me for many years I've been coaching, it's, it's, uh, I've been aggressive. And this is not the type of uh, way that we play that, uh, that, uh, that uh, I think um, exemplifies uh, what I'm about, you know, and that's my fault. So uh, I've expressed my concerns to their coaches and to our staff. And, and ask the players to just keep buying into our culture and buying into our team. And uh, we'll see if the results are any different this weekend. As you thought of that, is there something that kind of steered you toward being more concerned? We've talked about injuries and different, you know, the, the frustration. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just sick of excuses. And, and that's what it comes down to. I'm just kind of over it now, you know, and uh, hard work and all that stuff. It, it makes sense. But working smart also. And then, um, yeah, it's just. Uh, fight or flight time and I want to fight, you know, and, and um, not literally, you know, but I think I think there's times you can still, I mean, the sun came up and so there's another game this week and there's some positive things and I'm going to stay positive, but, uh, you know, I think the urgency, and I've talked about this a bunch of times, is to get better now and the only way we can get better is to work hard and be aggressive and I don't think uh, as a program we've been aggressive enough and that's my fault and so I'm hanging this on me and, and uh, the players are working hard and I said that again, but you know, I, I need the um, I need all the coaches to buy in the same thing, same type of mindset and philosophy, and and uh, let's let's go to work and let's just, let's so let's show everybody what we can do when uh, when when uh, the cards are stacked against you and there's a lot of uh, issues going. You know, if you look at that uh, the, the losing streak, it causes some issues. So the only way we can f deal with it is to fight right now and be aggressive. That aggressive mindset. How do you think it will impact the offense in particular? Just score points, whatever it takes. I don't care if you go fast. I don't care if you're in the empty the whole dang time. I don't care. Let's just score points. And you, I want to be able to just say, hey, let's slow down. That's what I want to say, you know. So uh, whatever it takes. And I'm giving free reign to our offensive staff to be creative as much as you can and use the, the talent that we have on the field. Regardless of injuries, there's enough talent to win games, you know, and score points. And so, uh, yeah, I, I guess. Maybe I'm letting the game plan out, but we're going to be aggressive and we're going to we're going to give it everything we get we can and, and get the playmakers to make plays. And as coaches, we need to put them in that position. You've averaged less than 60 plays a game over the season. Are you expecting more plays on offense? Hopefully, I, all I care about is points. I mean, if it's 60 plays and we score a lot of points, that's all that matters. And we're efficient, then that that matters to me. So productivity is all about points scored rather than. A number of plays, but if in order to get for us to get more points, we have to get more plays, and so be it. That's just um, you know we we we're we're dealing with a lot of new new um, bodies out there because of our depth, and they're giving us the effort that we that we ask for, which is what I've seen. Then let's just uh, let's use them all, and let's let's just go at, after it and see what happens. And that's on all three phases. I was just going to ask, will that aggressive level carry over to defense too? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that's that's what that's what I want. So. You know, I mean, you guys can read between the lines. If you're if you're a coordinator and a, and a coach on the staff, then pretty much know what I'm saying right now, and this is what it comes down to. Do you foresee any significant personnel changes? Yep, all of it is involved, you know. So uh, I don't know if significant. I, I, I don't know if we have to see 
what we're dealing with. I mean, it was uh, uh, it hurt us a lot losing Troy Warner, you know, and that that's that uh that that was hard to deal with. And obviously, you saw them attack our corners when they came in. And um, Troy's been solid, not not perfect, but he's played really well for his second year starting. And um, you know, probably highly unlikely, unlikely that he'll return this year. So. Well, I know the I know. I know Coach Brennan is a good friend of mine. I mean, we lived in the same neighborhood when we were at Oregon State together, and so um, our, our families have become close. He's a good friend of mine. We still keep in touch. Uh, you know, Derek Odom is our defensive coordinator. I know him really well, too. We worked, worked together at Utah and at Oregon State. Um, I know they have Boje Fili Moyatu. I know the family. I know that. I know when he played at Utah State. So there's a lot of guys on that staff that I know. I think Kevin Cummins is the re receivers coach, and he was a GA when I was at Oregon State. So there's a lot of uh, good friendships on that. I mean, that's been pretty much every game that we played against. I've known guys on the other side, and so um, I know those guys are, are hard workers, and they're trying to build something in San Jose, and they're looking forward to coming here and and trying to steal one from us. And we need to protect our home turf and and. Uh, Whatever means necessary to win the game, we, whether it's being aggressive or scheme or game plan or personnel, it all it all matters right now. Is it dangerous to tell Johnny and Monahan to be aggressive? No, my love is shoot. He's, yeah, it's just aggressive is not Johnny's um, problem. It's it's intelligence and using using it well. I'm not I'm not talking about in the certain plays. It's taking risks at the right time, you know, and that that goes for everybody. I mean, it's not we're just gonna sit there and say, hey, there's no caution. We're just going to go after it. But um, but there's times to say, why not? You know, and, and um, you got to, you got to, uh, you know, it's either feast or famine. And let's, let's, let's give us a chance to feast. Otherwise, we just sit there and we bleed slowly and die. And so, uh, not to make all these correlations, but I'm not one to ever quit or to ever just give in. And, and neither is this team. So, like I said, you're going to go down. I'm going to be swinging. And that's that's our mindset right now going into this week. Can you address uh, Francis Bernard's status? I know he's not enrolled in school, so maybe you can't. But what what can you say about that situation? Um, I care about him as as a person, and and uh, obviously um, you probably don't know all the details, you know. But he he, uh, he he had asked for a release a couple weeks back, and we granted him a release. And looking at all his options, he he withdrew from school and. And was looking at his options, and one of them was possibly returning here to BYU, and um, even with with the release in hand, you know. And so, uh, I wish him the best in, in finding what's what's the best place for him. But did I care you, about him. Did you grant him a release to any school? Yes, to every school. I mean, I don't make statements to everyone and everyone that I release, but I think I've been vocal on how I feel about people that want to be here at BYU and and the, and the kids that I want to coach, and so. Uh, that's been. I've never denied anyone a release. Can I say that? So, that, I think that's the best way to do it. And, but I, with with that, I was not afraid to, to, re, you know, to recruit um, even Francis and to hope hopefully that he could come back here. But you know, obviously he's going through some things right now, and I just hope he knows that we love and and, and care for him. What about? Yeah, so uh, Marvin is on the team, and, and uh, when he got hurt, he notified us that he was leaving the team a couple weeks ago. And so, uh, like I said, I don't make statements on that, but uh, now that yes, specifically, he, after his injury, he decided to not be part of the team and not be a part of our program and not go to school. So that's kind of where it's at. I mean, just... Uh, I'm responsible for all of it, you know. So um, whatever it is, I, I, I'm always going to look at myself first, and obviously, it, but I also want to address the truth and reality on some things, and then my displeasure on some things that aren't working well. And but I also think that there's some things that I could do, first of all, as a head coach, to to be um, to impact this team. So it all starts with me, and um, if I could, I wish it ended with me, you know. So I, I'd like to get things fixed, and and whether it's um, my management skills or whatever it is. I've, I've been around great coaches and been around great programs, played in a great program under a great head coach and embraced 
all the wonderful hard work that's gone into this program from the coaches since then. And so um, trying to build off of that is something that we're focused on. And uh, we feel good about the program. We feel good about our, our building and our vision. It's just not showing in, in, in the record right now, you know. And, and um, the guys that coached us to a 9-4 and four season last year are the same guys that we have now. And so if there's something that we're doing differently, that I'm doing differently, and, and so that I can improve on as a head coach, then I'm going to work on that and, and try to get it fixed. But, yeah, I, I look at that record and I take it to heart. It's, you know, that's something that, that, I, that I'm really uh, focused on, and I, I'm always going to look in the mirror first, and that's, that's my focus right now. Do you have a preference on kickoff times? I know your last two home games are scheduled for 1 o'clock. Do you have a preference on when you guys kick it off? Yeah, I like I like daytime games too. I mean, I, I like them all. So I think there's a good good part where we can have all our fans there to support us. That's all I care about, and I have a I feel like I have a great connection to the fans because I am one, you know. But um, whatever they can get, if they can get all their little league games and all that stuff out of the way so they can show up, that'd be good for us. But I like games in the daytime. I just think that college football is so nice to play in all different times of the day, even at 11 in the morning at some places, you know. So. Uh, as long as we get to play the game, um, yeah, we have a lot to prove and a lot to improve on. I'm just glad that we have another opportunity this week. You mentioned after the game that wanted to honor the seniors. What is kind of the attitude of the seniors right now going these last? Few yeah, they just continue to lead, and 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 this is, I mean, uh, for for many of them, this will be the end of it, you know. And so um, we we have to try our best to to honor them and how we establish this program because this is going to really make a mark on what we do and. And how we play the next five games on, on on their hard work and sacrifices going into this program, you know. So I think they're going to be be happy to just say that they were part of building this program, the culture, and this team, and and that they this was a significant part of it. I mean, uh, obviously we're not cashing it in for the season. We're we're trying to honor them and try to do what we can, and we're also honoring Lavelle Edwards, who's a great mentor of mine. And you know, I'd like to say that. I think he's proud of the way that I'm loving these guys and the, 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 that I'm trying to um, help them out in all their goals. It's just not wor- working in the in the record, you know. And that's, uh, but we have a, a chance to make it better with these five games and starting with San Jose State. That's that's the focus. But I got to do it with being aggressive. And I think I've said that word enough. You guys kind of get the idea. Last couple questions. 